Good morning, it's James. I do hope and pray this message finds you and your loved ones peaceful, thriving, and very well. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your energy. I'm deeply grateful to have the honor and the blessing of laying eyes on you today. And this morning's message, I do believe, is for everyone. Everyone here in this community and hopefully people who are not part of this community will find it because you share it with them, whether the video or you just share it because you love them and you care about them. And this is all about the spiritual brain. And this is a deep, deep subject for me. I, I, I find myself pouring over the research that comes out of Columbia pretty much every day because it's always giving me new insights, things that help me to heal, help me to soften the hardness. Sometimes it's in my heart and give me a sense of hope and possibility about the work that I believe every single one of us is doing. And the spiritual brain, according to Columbia, is all about a brain of growth. It's a brain of healing and hope. It's a brain that is attached to a human, you and me, that's very dedicated to a personal practice of self-care. It could be meditation. It could be healthy diet. It could be just moving each and every morning, taking a walk in the woods. It could be just breathing with your diaphragm and giving yourself permission to feel a sense of presence. All of these experiences are connected to a spiritual brain. And when Columbia defines a spiritual brain or a spiritual person, they simply say someone who has a dedicated practice or path of self-care that helps them to feel more of a growth person, a person who's more spiritually connected, a person who feels like they heal more and more each and every day as they practice these things. And I think that for all of us here, when we kind of see ourselves going, oh my gosh, I thought I had finished that pattern. I thought that thought was, uh, you know, was hopefully gone. And then you find yourself kind of going, oh my gosh, here it is, visiting me again. Here it is, giving me an opportunity to do one of two things, judge myself, or love myself. Judge myself and saying, oh my gosh, I haven't uh, healed that yet. I'm not beyond that yet. That pattern's still here. I'm still doing this thing. Or here's a beautiful reminder to look at this with fresh eyes, to give myself a potential to soften the way I see myself. Because according to Columbia's research, part of being a spiritual person and having a spiritual practice is simply having the acknowledgement of the work at hand and then whether it's a practice of self-care that you associate with yoga, movement, food, meditation, mindfulness, anything that you do that gives you permission to feel good about the work at hand. And that relationship of feeling good about the work at hand does have a way of finding its way into our mind, having, our, having a way of finding its way into our brain, into our psyche, and helping us to soften those edges and over time helping us to heal what it is that we feel we can't fully resolve, we can't fully get by on. The somatic nervous system, which is so deeply connected to trauma, continually is looking for ways to soften, to heal, to transform, to become a more loving, less on guard type of presence, less vigilance, more love of self. And the spiritual brain is very much dedicated to this practice that we get a chance to do each and every day. And there's a beautiful bird outside. I just, I couldn't help but take a look and it just left. It was a hummingbird. Ah, what a beautiful totem, auspicious thing for that to, um, that beautiful being to pop in just now. The lightness of the work at hand is the work at hand. Giving ourselves permission to have it be light versus hard. I think for many of us in the spiritual path, we've mastered the heartaholic and we're looking for a way to bring more light and love, compassion, joy, grace, and gratitude into our life. So my encouragement for you, and this is something I'm doing right alongside of you, I promise, whatever your practice is, or if you're looking for a practice, simply understand that no matter what that practice is, if you connect it with love of self, it becomes a spiritual catalyst to help us heal whatever in our life is still trying to teach us softness and love and self-acceptance and help us to continually know that we are alive to the degree that we serve. But we must begin with serving something greater than ourself, which is the deepest self that wants to continually become more alive, more hopeful, more possible, more full of love of self and all that is around us. Thank you for doing the work I see you. I'm working right alongside of you, and I love you. Peace and blessings. Bye for now.